Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, and thank you for joining us for our online services. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And we're so excited to be connecting with you in your homes today. And family, there is so much though out there that is consuming our minds right now. You know, there's the uncertainties of the future, there's fears and stress and anxiety and loss. So many of us feel that really weighing us down, especially this week, it, it just keeps building and we're stuck at home, but not really resting. And it can be a daily struggle just not letting these things consume our minds. Any of you have stress building up in your shoulders or just moments where you felt overwhelmed or alone? So do this, everyone watching, just close your eyes, close your eyes and take a deep breath and just breathe that out, and then we're just gonna pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that right now you are God. We thank you right now that you're in control. You know all the things going on in our hearts, Heavenly Father. You know all the things that we're worried about, that, that we're stressed about, God. And we lay those at your feet. We right now push those aside, and we open up our hearts for your spirit to speak to us. Allow us to just spend this time with a free heart, free mind, to be able to hear what you have to say to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take this time together. We're gonna refocus and encourage our hearts, casting out those fears and lies from our mind. We're gonna lean in, we're gonna grab our Bibles, we're gonna open our Bible apps, we're gonna worship together, we're gonna grow together, and we're gonna come more like Jesus for the sake of others. Welcome to church. Well, welcome to Pure Heart Worship. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're joining us. So no matter where you find yourself today, stand up right now. Raise your hands if you want to. Enjoy worshiping along with us. Let's give glory to God today. God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please again. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, God, I need you.
like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Yes, it is. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy
who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may, so come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Oh, and I know, I know I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. Yes, I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. That's where you'll be. Ooh. Oh God, we just thank you for your presence. God, all around the world as people tune in, God. God, as we worship you and we give you praise that you deserve, God, we just lift all this up in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Father God, we just thank you for this time. God, and with everything going around in the world, so much uncertainty, God, we know that you are in control, Father, of all of it. God, you see everything. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are outside of time, God. And you can see what comes next. And you're preparing your bride, the body of Christ, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this time. So, God, as we receive your tithes and offering, God, we just pray. We pray over them. We pray that you'd bless them. God, we pray that you would um, just give wisdom to leadership to steward it well. God, as we're blessing and we're serving the community around us, and we just lift all of this up in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Well, for more ways to learn how to give and to jump in here at Pure Heart, here is Pastor Matt. Pure Heart, you are a generous church, and we want to thank you so much for your continued generosity. Your faithfulness and your giving during this time of crisis has allowed Pure Heart to do some incredible things. You're allowing Pure Heart to stand in the gap, to be an essential resource, to be Christ to our community. And this week, we did a soft launch of our next LifeBridge Resource Center location. This one's located at our Peoria campus and it'll allow us to continue on with meeting our mission of meeting the needs, the immediate needs of vulnerable people right now. And we're targeting the elderly, people who are disabled, single parents or families with children that are 15 years old, and those who have had their employment status affected by COVID-19. And meeting these needs in our community is why churches right now are being recognized by the government as essential resources resources at this time. Praise God for that. So many of the people that we are helping, they never expected that they were going to be unsure of where their next family's meal was going to be coming from. And Pure Heart Family, it's been so awesome to see that along with the financial giving, you're dropping off food, emergency supplies, you're volunteering your time in the midst of this crisis. So as you put your tithes and offerings in the mail, as you're giving online or in the Pure Heart app, know that this is what your generosity is going towards. You can also now take out your phone and you can text the word P 
PHGIVE to 97000, and this will send you a link to our online giving. You can also download the Pure Heart app in your phone's app store and give on there or on our website, pureheart.org slash give. So thank you, family, for your continued support of Pure Heart as we're leaning in to being one of the essential services to helping vulnerable people in this time. Every week we pray for another church, and we do this because we believe we don't go at this alone. Kingdom of God is bigger than what's just happening at Pure Heart Church, and God is doing amazing things in His churches all around the world. So today, we are praying for Oasis Community Church and Pastor Billy Claudio. Pastor Billy's heart is to help network pastors, to help churches meet the needs of our communities during this challenging time. They are also members of our Better Together Church community. So Heavenly Father, we pray for Pastor Billy Claudio and the congregation at Oasis Community Church. And during this time, God, of upheaval and restructuring and, and figuring out new things, new ways to reach people for Christ, and figuring out how to connect communities to the church and churches to the needs of the people, God. We pray that you're gonna give them wisdom, you're gonna give them knowledge, you're gonna give them financial resources, God, as they step into that gap. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hey, I want to take a moment and thank you for checking out who Pure Art is. Thank you for visiting our website, seeing what we're all about. We live stream on the weekends. Also during the week, you can check out recorded services and be connected that way. At Pure Heart, we have a passion to see hurting and broken people find healing. We care deeply about people. We say all the time, it's okay to not be okay here. And you do not have to pretend and you don't have to stay stuck. We would love for you to find hope, find encouragement, find love, and find that freedom, maybe that healing you're looking for in life. Also, we have a passion for our community. We talk all the time, a big question we ask is if we were gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? Would our neighborhoods miss us? And we're doing all kinds of things to make a difference in our city because we care about you. We care about people. We serve a great God and we would love to introduce you to Him and for you to find a place to belong at Pure Heart. Thank you for taking the time to see who we are. We can't wait to find out who you are. Pure Heart family, now more than ever, we need to stay connected in community. So to help you stay connected with others during the season and grow in your relationship with God, this last week we launched virtual online small groups. And it was so good, you don't wanna miss out. So go to pureheart.org slash circles or text circles to 97000 to get a link and then complete the form and we'll send out the details of your next steps. Also Wednesdays at 6 p.m. is our new prayer time. It was awesome. Go to Pure Heart Facebook page, join us live as some of our pastors pray for the submitted prayer requests, seek the Lord during these challenging times and directly after at 6.30 p.m. we'll be hosting a Facebook premiere of last week's messages. So you can join in the conversation, jump into the chat, as we discuss what God has been showing you through the message this last week and how it's been impacting your life. Lastly, to make sure you don't miss out on all the new things we are rolling out, follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, go to your phone's app store and download the Pure Heart app. And we are so excited about the opportunities God's gonna give us during this season as we remember that the church is not a building. So lean in, take lots of notes, jump in on the live chat, let's grow together. And here's Pastor Dan. Welcome to week three of the Grand Adventure. So glad that you tuned in with us today. And we are reaching people all over the world. This has been so exciting. As difficult as the season has been, it's so exciting to see the church leave the building and go out across the world. We were in, I think, 31 countries last weekend with the message. We were in 43 different states. We saw another 23 people make decisions for Christ. We were just so excited about the impact. We had people tuning in from Vietnam. The Parker family, the Parkers reached out and gave us a shout out from Vietnam. Also, I want to welcome Crossroads Recovery. We love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in with us. We're believing and standing with you in your recovery as well. And then once again, all my family in Central Illinois, but not just Central Illinois. I got a call from my aunt in Oregon. I got a call from other family members in, like in Wisconsin, all over the country. Thank you for tuning in, Steffens and Mueller's as well. We're so glad to have you with us today. So we're going to dive into a very, very important message today where I believe this is what we're all living right now. We're all living in this moment. And in here, Here's the huge question. Here's the question we're going to be asking today. The question is this, what do you do next when you just don't know what's next? You find yourself in a circumstance that becomes a season where there seems to be no clear way forward and you're not sure how this is all going to end. When you're stuck in the coronavirus waiting room of life, if you will. Now, this uncertainty, this waiting in life isn't just necessarily with a pandemic like we're facing right now as a world. It happens in normal life as well. 
Uh, Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe you're married and you don't know if they want to change and they're not sure they want to change, but they don't want to move out. And they're telling you, I don't want to change. I like who I am, but they don't want to move out. And you're wondering, where is this marriage going to go? Maybe you're single and your soulmate is nowhere to be found. And you never thought you would go on to an online dating site, but it's coronavirus waiting room and you've got a lot of time on your hands. So you've been going on these websites trying to find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right right now. And matter of fact, maybe some of you, maybe my family in central Illinois, you went on farmersonly.com and maybe some of you have never even been to a farm. You're trying to figure out how is this all going to work? Maybe your kids are struggling. You said to them, you said, hey, bad company corrupts good character. And they looked at you like, oh, mom and dad, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm leading them to Jesus. And instead of them leading, your kids leading them to Jesus, their friends led them to sex and drugs and broken and wasted dreams. And you're just in this what next period of what's going to happen in their life. Maybe you're a teenager and you're, you're a first generation follower of Jesus and your parents don't have your same values. They don't love your Jesus. And you're wondering, how do I move forward? How do I encourage my family? How do I do this as a first generation follower of Jesus? Maybe it's financial. Your dreams of get, getting out of debt have just blown up into coronavirus smoke. Maybe it's professionally. Um, they're not hiring for the area that you were trained for and you don't know how to retrain Right now, your, your idea of getting out of debt has become a nightmare. Your professional life has become a nightmare. Maybe it's a health issue for you. Maybe you got a bad report from the doctor. It's not, it's not going to take your life, but it's chronic, and it's going to change the way you do life, and the way you're living now is going to be a new normal for the foreseeable future, and you don't know if it'll ever change. Maybe for you it's more a mental health situation. Maybe it's depression. It's come on like a a dark cloud or a heavy blanket that just comes around your soul and you don't know how to get out. There's always the temptation in these waiting times of life to quit, to run away, to spend, to go online and spend as much money as you can, but you're not sure if you can do that right now. Maybe for you it's binging Netflix and you've run out of shows to watch. And I heard a couple of my friends ask me this last week, what shows are you watching now? And I hear that conversation all the time now. What are you watching? What new show, what new series can I watch? And you've run out of things to watch. Or maybe for you it's bored eating. It's just mindless eating eating, you find yourself dancing between Doritos and Thin Mints over and over and over again. Or maybe it's darker for you. Maybe it's it's a numbing out situation. You're trying to escape and maybe you had broke free from that addiction, but it's pulling you back in right now. And you know, it's just going to make things worse. It's just going to complicate life even more. I don't know where you find yourself today in this waiting period of life. And what do I do next when I don't know what's next? But I want us to gain some perspective today. I want us to be mentored by a man by the name of Paul who found in the most difficult of circumstances. Now you're going to find this hard to believe in the most difficult of circumstances when he was in a great waiting season of life, not knowing what was coming next. He found something so important. And you may not believe this. He found this. Here's the word. You ready? Contentment. Say it with me contentment. Some of you are like, contentment. Dan, you're going to talk about contentment right now? My whole world is spinning out of control, and you want to talk about contentment? Yes, I want to talk about contentment, because here's what contentment is. Contentment is peace on the inside, when everything on the outside is going crazy. And I, need, I know for many of us right now, we desperately need that. We desperately want that. Now, Paul steps onto the pages of history as a hater of Christians. And then he miraculously becomes a Christ follower. And as he becomes a Christ follower, he begins a world impacting ministry. And for 10 straight years, he's on this powerful adventure, planting churches, doing miracles in the name of Jesus, seeing lives changed all around him. And then life comes to a screeching halt. And Paul finds himself in prison, a prison in Rome. Nero, I'm sorry, um, yes, Nero was the emperor. And Nero was a crazy man. Nero Nero would take Christians, he would persecute Christians, he would take Christians, he would dip them in tar and then light them on fire and put them in his gardens to light the path as he would walk at night with his concubines. Nero was a crazy man. So here's Paul sitting in prison. It doesn't look good for him. He doesn't know what's next. He's in this waiting room of life. It looks like the kingdom of Rome has won and the kingdom of Jesus has lost. It seems like there's nothing that he could do. 
But here's the great thing about Paul. He was zealous before he came to Christ. Now he's zealous for Jesus. He's not going to sit around on his hands and do nothing sitting in prison. He decides to start writing some letters. He didn't know that these letters would become the key writings, the majority of what we know today as the New Testament in the best-selling book of all time called the Bible. He had no idea he was going to be a key writer in the best-selling book of all time, the Bible. Side note real quick, a friend of mine, Pastor Chris on our staff, he sent me a picture the other day, a picture at Walmart. And you know, we see pictures all the time in grocery stores and Walmarts and Walgreens and all the places where all the toilet paper's gone. He sent me this picture, we're gonna show it right now. He sent me this picture where the Bibles, like there's not many Bibles, like people have just been buying up all the Bibles. I am finding that during this season, this waiting time, people are digging into the Bible like never before. People are looking for hope. They're looking for answers. And so it's during this time, it's during this time that Paul writes what we know today as his prison epistles, his prison letters. It's during this time he writes Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. He writes these letters. He had no idea that what he was writing would change the Western world that would turn the world upside down. It would change people's view of God. It would undermine the Roman government. He had no idea. He had no idea how his faithfulness while waiting would impact you and me sitting here today in the 21st century. You see, emperors during this time, emperors wrote a lot. They put their writings in vaults. They had them copied, but we don't have many of their writings today. We have Paul's writings today from this prison cell in Rome. See, friends, we have no idea how our lives, our faithfulness during this waiting season that we all find ourselves in right now, we have no idea how our faithfulness today is going to impact the people around us and ripple into eternity. See, people pay more attention to us. They pay more attention to our faith when life is difficult than when life is good. There are more people watching your life seeing how you're responding, especially on social media. They're looking at what you post, what you do. They're looking at your life right now. How we respond right now could very well be the catalyst to open up your friend's heart to a relationship with Jesus. That friend that you thought would never come to Jesus, you may have an opportunity through this crisis, through this pandemic, to lead them to Christ. I'm hearing stories, I actually posted one this last week. I'm hearing stories all the time of people who are being impacted, who are sharing Christ and being God's light, and people are coming to Jesus in ways that they never ever thought they would before, because right now people are looking. They're looking for hope. And they're looking for strength. Throughout this message, just as I did last weekend, we're going to be sharing some stories. So I want to take a moment, take a break. I'll be right back to continue this message. Here's our first two stories today. I heard a great story this last week on social media from one of my friends, Megan. She's a NICU nurse at Banner Hospital. And she just posted a picture of the people around the flagpoles that work at her hospital. She was inspired by Pastor Dan's message last weekend and felt like God had laid on her heart that she needed to be a light at the hospital at Banner. And so she went to her superiors and pitched the idea of having a prayer at the flagpole and the chaplain at the hospital was on board and they were able to you know fashion a gathering another neighboring hospital a boswell banner joined them and they were just able to connect and pray together and be the light of jesus just as they were serving i just love that megan was able to respond quickly to the prompting of the holy spirit and step out in faith that God had called her to do something and in confidence she was able to do that. And it was such a cool picture that she had showed because she gave credit to a friend that took the picture. You could see all the hospital staff standing around the flagpoles. I think it was the state of Arizona and the American flag and then maybe like the hospital flag. And directly behind all of the flagpoles were three or four palm trees. And the way the palm trees were fashioned, their arms kind of spread out and it looked like crosses behind the flagpoles. And it was just a neat picture to be able to just envision God's presence upon the hospital as their staff prayed. Our kids are hurting right now. 
Our teachers are hurting. They are feeling lost and questioning, and there's so many things that God has put into place for this time. We have partnerships with three churches, Pure Heart being the first church that really got involved at our school and dug in. With the quarantine, we have have a group that is shopping for each other and taking care of each other. We have meal trains that are taking care of families that are struggling and maybe having medical issues. It's exciting to see the members of Pure Heart interact with that and with the neighbors interact with that and we're coming together. One of the opportunities that has been just amazing to me is the ability to share with people from our church situations that need really intense prayer and we have people from Pure Heart who have come forward and they're prayer partners for our school. So when there's a situation like a staff member who has cancer or a family that's struggling, they pray for them. And I think having that partnership and that involvement in our school at that level is extremely important. I've got to know a lot of the people in the community, people who aren't churchgoers, but they are beginning to see Pure Heart as something different. They're seeing that Pure Heart is a place to come for comfort. That leads many of these people to come to Christ. And it's a beautiful thing when people who go to Acacia or Sunburst or Ironwood or Desert Foothills, and they hear about Pure Heart interacting there, and then when they come to a time in their life that they need encouragement, they come to Pure Heart, and it's through us interacting and through us becoming a part of the neighborhood and the schools that that can happen. I love those stories from Deb, and I love that story from Jen. Powerful, powerful stories. And so now I want you to open your Bibles or open your Bible apps. Go with me to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 10. This is one of the letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison in Rome. He was in this waiting room of life, if you will. All right. So this is what Paul, he writes about contentment. But I want us to see something in here today. And, and, and what I'm going to share with you, it's not for many of you, you're not going to be like, wow, that's a brand new revelation. I never heard of it, of it before. I think today is going to be a reminder of what we desperately need deep inside of our soul. So go with me as Paul mentors us today, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 10. This, we're going to pick it up in verse 10. This is what he writes. He said, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Paul, Paul's writing to him and saying, hey, I'm so grateful that you renewed your concern for me. You knew what I was going through. You thought about the trials that I was facing. You renewed your concern for me. And he goes on, he said this, you were concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. He's like, I, I know you, I know really deep down you cared. You just didn't have an opportunity yet to show it. And so in those days, news traveled really slow. It's not like today where we can literally watch the death tolls on cable news in real time, which is just freaky for us to watch these days. Um, so they sent him a care package. Paul's in prison. They send Paul, the Philippian church, the, the brothers and sisters there, they send a care package to Paul while he's in prison. And so it finally gets to him. I, mean, I don't know all that he sent them. Maybe they sent him some scrolls or maybe they sent him his, his Xbox, his Reese's peanut butter cups or his ranch flavored Pringles. I guess that would be my wish list if it were, all right? He finally got his care package from the church in, in Philippi and Paul goes on and this is what he says. He says, I'm not saying this because I am in need. Now, now catch this very next statement, it's so important. For I have, say it with me, learned. Come on, let's say it again. Learn, for I have learned, I have learned to be, here's our word, content. I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Now this word learned in the Greek language means this, it means to understand or to gain a new perspective. I've learned, I've come to understand something, I've gained a whole new perspective. The idea of contentment here, listen to this, this is very important. The idea of contentment is to be at peace no longer striving or fretting or blaming or running away from the pain. It's leaning into that circumstance and finding a peace that makes no sense in our circumstances. See, here's something that I know all too well. Pain is an incredible teacher. Matter of fact, I've learned more about life, myself, my relationship with God, I've learned more about my relationship with Jesus, more about my own life, more about myself. I've learned more in difficult seasons of life than in any other seasons of life. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you right now, I believe on the other side of this because we are going to get through this. Can I get an amen in every house around the world right now? We're going to get through this. 
on the other side, there's gonna be some things that we are going to learn, that we're gonna hold on to, that we're gonna look back and say, I never wanna go through that again, <laughs> never. But I'm grateful for who I've become and what I've learned. I've learned so much in the difficult seasons of life. See, I've, I've actually learned more about leadership from experiencing bad leadership. I, I've learned more about money in times when money was lean than when I had plenty. I, I've learned more about friendship and true love through abandonment of friends that I thought would be with me forever. I've learned more about friendship, money, my life. I've learned more during difficult times than I have during the good times. We're all learning some things right now that we're gonna look back and be grateful that we learn. And now Paul goes on, verse 12, he says this. He says, for I know, he's like, I know this. I know this deep down inside. I know what it is to be in need. Can I get a mm-hmm from anybody today? I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. Paul's simply saying this. He's saying, when I had more, I didn't get addicted to it so that when I was in need, I was going through withdrawals or I felt lost. Man, do we need to hear that right now. Paul's like, I know what it's like to have a lot and I know what it's like to have a little. And then he says this. This is so good, so good. Watch this. He said this. I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm well-fed or whether I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or I'm living in want. Now, Paul reaches into the culture and he uses a word to get their attention, a word that's only used to, to, was used to initiate someone into a secret fraternity. So when Paul says this Greek word, I've learned the secret, everybody leaned in that was listening to this letter being read in the church in Philippi. Everybody leaned in. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. We've heard about in Greek culture these secret fraternities. Paul's like, Shh, listen, come here. He's like, I've learned, I've been initiated into a secret fraternity. I've been initiated into a secret fraternity of contentment. I've learned to be content. Paul's saying, this was a process I learned. It's a process. This didn't just happen in a moment. It was a process that God took me through. Now with everybody leaning in and everybody thinking at that moment as they're listening to this letter being read for the first time in the church in Philippi, they're all leaning in. They had to be thinking to themselves, how? Paul, how do we do this? I mean, you're in prison, Paul. You've been beaten. You've been shipwrecked. We've heard your story. We've heard the things that you've gone through. Paul, how with everything that you've gone through, tell us the secret. Initiate us into the secret fraternity. We too want to be a part of this contentment that makes no sense in our circumstances. And then he tells us the secret. And for many of us who've been walking with Jesus for a long time, what you're about to read next, first of all, is one of the most famous verses in the Bible but it's also the most um, misapplied verses in the Bible. Many of you already know this. Today, I just want to remind us. And this is what Paul writes. He says, I can do all this. I can do all this. Persecution, lack, pain, waiting, prison. I can do all this, Paul said, through him. Let's read it together. Let's all read this out loud together. Ready, go. Through him, who gives me strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, the best, the best translation of this would simply be these words. I can, say this with me, endure all things. We hear do and we, and we think, man, I could, I could, we think of sports, uh, we think of athletes and they quote this verse all the time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can, I can hit the home run. I can, I can run the touchdown. I can do all these things. We can do great things. No, no, no. The idea of this verse, the idea of this word has to do with enduring. Enduring waiting seasons of life when you don't know what's next and you don't know if, when it's gonna end. And all of us find ourselves there right now. And Paul is looking down through the ages as he sat in this Roman prison cell. And I make it personal for me. I, I believe he's writing to me as a husband, as a father, as a leader. And he's saying, Dan, listen, lean in 
And Lord, I'm gonna initiate you to a secret fraternity. You, Dan, can endure COVID-19. You can endure as a father. You can endure as a husband. You can endure as a leader of a great church. You can endure through him who gives you strength. And everybody said, amen. Now, I imagined to myself that, you know, we think about this, this, this statement, this verse, and we've seen it used in so many different ways, haven't we? I mean, you see it on a banner at a football game. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show a picture right now. There's a banner at a football game and they're running, this team is running through the banner and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what you have to understand is, think about Paul for a moment. Think if Paul could actually see that scene. He could see a football team running through a banner that says, I can do all things through Christ. He had to, he would have to be thinking to himself, really? Really? I went to prison. I suffered. I was shipwrecked. I went through all these things. So you could use these words to endure a football game? It can't be just about a football game. I mean, unless it's a Cardinals football game. I mean, you're really, never mind. You see, even during COVID-19, I can't stop making Cardinals jokes. And I ask you to forgive me, and mostly because the Bible says so. And the Bible also says, you have to keep loving me, which works out really, really nice. So Paul has to be thinking to himself, you can't be using this for a sporting event. And listen, if we make this just about winning a game, if we make this about some great feat in the sports world, we miss the deep secret that this verse was intended for. The ability in Christ to endure the most difficult things in life with and through our relationship with Jesus. We can't water this verse down. We can't just slap it on every little thing and every little slogan we want to be in life. This is about going through difficult times. Paul's in the waiting room of life of prison. And he writes this to us. This is, this is what Paul's saying. You ready? This is what he's saying. Paul's simply saying this. He's saying, I can't, he can, and he can through me. Let's say that together. Ready? Go. I can't, he can, and he can through me. I'm not going to pretend that I can, but I know that he can. He dragged his cross, his own cross, up that hill, and he died for me. If he can do that on purpose, then nothing is impossible for my Jesus. That the same power that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in me. And we're going to celebrate that resurrection. We're going to celebrate that next weekend as we celebrate Easter together all around our state, all around our country, and all around the world as we gather together in our homes and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. That same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And that same power can bring each and every one of us through this moment in life we find ourselves where we just don't know what's next. Let's make it personal. Maybe for some of you, you're single. Um, and you are just be real. You say, I I'm lonely. I'm more lonely than ever. And maybe you've been looking at some options to fix, fix that. And you, you know that if you compromise, and, and I'm going to get a little extra personal here. I know we have kids watching, so I'm going to be careful with this. You're, you're think, you've been thinking about giving away something that you've been trying to save for your wedding night. Hoping that somehow they'll stay with you if you do that with them, you know it's going to make the relationship more complicated. You know it's going to make life more complicated. Here's what, here's what you need to understand. You can't, he can, and he can through you. Don't let go of that which you've been holding on to to give one time for the first time. Don't compromise right now to hold on to that relationship. Trust him in the midst of your loneliness to meet you in places in your heart that no guy, that no girl could ever meet. Maybe you're pregnant. Let's get even more real. You're single and you're pregnant. And this means the end of some dreams that you had for life. The end of the world as you know it. And you, you think to yourself, I can't have this baby. Especially right now. Well, you're right. You can't. But he can. And I promise you that he can through you. Maybe things are on edge in your home right now and worlds are colliding thanks to the coronavirus and 
Matter of fact, the other day they, they said, you know, somebody in your house said, who's going to go to the store and buy groceries? And you volunteered just so you could get a break and go. And now you know you got to go back home and you don't want to go back home and you don't want to face the upheaval in the house and it's stressful and it's, it's overwhelming. And you, just, you were saying to yourself in the car this week as you were driving back to your house, I can't do this, God. And God would say to us, I know you can't, but I can. And I can through you. Maybe it's a health situation. The doctors are shrugging their shoulders and they're saying they can't. And Jesus is saying to you today, I know they can't, but I can. And I can through you. Maybe it's your finances. And right now you're broke and you're wondering how you're going to make this all work. And, and $2,400 or $1,200 of COVID virus stimulus, is, stimulus isn't going to make a difference for the long haul. And you don't know how you're going to do this. I can't do this, God. And he says, let me tell you a secret. Paul says, let me tell you a secret. I know you can't, but he can, and he can through you. Maybe, maybe it's deeper relationship pain, and maybe you were having struggles in your marriage before COVID-19, and now you find yourself in the same room, and you're struggling to forgive, and there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of frustration, a lot of upheaval in the home, and, and you were, your marriage was already on the rocks, and now you're wanting to throw rocks at each other, and you're struggling to forgive, and you're struggling to let go. And you're saying, well, how can I forgive? Or maybe it's a friendship. And they hurt you. And right now you need that friend, but they hurt you and you've struggled to forgive them. But here you are lonely and you want to reach out. How do I forgive them? Listen, you said, I can't forgive. I know you can't, but he can. And he can through you. He can help you to release that and to extend forgiveness and to find reconciliation in relationships, even right now in the season of life. Maybe it's addiction. And we've had so many of our Crossroads friends come out of their recovery program. And right now, with not being able to find a job, and right now with stresses in the home, some of them have been triggered. Some of them have come right here to our campus looking for hope and looking for help. And many of them said, I just don't know how to do this. I can't. I just keep going back to the very thing that I know that's not bringing me life. And I know that you can't, but we know this in recovery, don't we, guys and gals? We know this, those of us walking through recovery. We can't, but he can. And he can through you. I know that these days my, I am filled with leadership decision after leadership decision. Um, today alone, today alone, I had a, a meeting with Martha, our Senator Martha McSally and 86 different leaders across our state. Um, they, they asked me to be a central coordinator to put together uh, for Banner Health. I had a call with the, the vice president of HR for Banner Health um, just uh, yesterday. In this conversation, she asked if I would be willing to help, along with two other pastors in the valley, to collect other churches, to get them together who would help do child care and care packages and to provide chaplains and pastors for all the Banner hospitals in Arizona, from northern Arizona, central Arizona, down in southern Arizona. We're also working with the three other um, um, hospital agencies right now as well. And I, was, I go into those meetings, and I've been given these opportunities, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't have the leadership experience for this. I, I don't, there's a lot of other pastors in this country a lot of other pastors in the state with more influence, but God has allowed me this opportunity. And there's times when I think to myself before I go on these Zoom calls, like, God, I don't, I don't know how I can do this. I don't know how I can organize all this and how to put all this together. And, and the Spirit of God just whispers to me, I know you can't, Dan. You're a little farm boy from central Illinois who I saved and redeemed and healed. And I put you in this place for such a time as this. And you can't but I can, and I can through you, Dan. And I know that I'm not alone. I know that he's saying that to every single one of us listening today. And everybody said, amen. So let's just take a moment. We have one more story, and then I'll be right back to pray with you and finish this message today. This is a crazy time, isn't it? It's just, there's so many things going on. And as everything's been moving forward, we as the worship team have been trying to band together and pray for each other. So we've been sending out texts to all the different team and gathering up a prayer list so we can be praying. And through that process, we've discovered that there are so many people that are just waiting. They're in a season of waiting and they don't know what's coming next. We have high schoolers that are about to graduate in their senior year. They don't even know if they're gonna have a graduation with their friends. We have college students whose nursing programs have been put on hold. We have 
business owners who have sold businesses, lost businesses, don't know what to do with their business. We have so many different situations going on. And what God is teaching us is that even though this is a crazy time, it's a time as the body of Christ to band together and to pray for one another. In the waiting, as crazy as this time is, God is teaching us things. He's teaching us to worship through the storm. He's teaching us to trust on Him more fully. And now we know that the songs that we're singing about are more real than they've ever been. That was a powerful story from Zach. Here's what I know, family. I know this, that a vast majority of us will not get COVID-19, but all of us are impacted by the fear and the stress that's going on right now. We need this peace. We need this contentment from Jesus like never before. I know for me this, this week as I was finishing up those Zoom calls that I had, after each one of those calls I got done, I remember just sitting back in my chair going, Lord, that turned out a lot better than I thought. I had people texting me and leaders texting me and people calling me and saying, man, that was awesome and thank you for what you shared and we really needed that and thank you for helping us bring us together. And it was just like the Holy Spirit was smiling in my heart going, I told you, Dan, I told you I'd bring you through. I told you I'd give you what you need. I, find, I am finding more and more hope as I'm leaning into before those calls, I'm just simply saying, God, I can't, I don't know how to do this, but I know that you can, Jesus, and I know that you can through me. I, I, even, in, even personally for, with our kids right now, for Nicole and I, as we look at some of the things that they're facing and now that school is done and there's some things that they're grieving and I know that Luke has been really bummed. He doesn't get to see his friends from Grand Canyon University. This is not the way he was expecting to end his freshman year in college and Josh is super relational and he, he's missing being able to connect more with his friends and having more freedom and Abby is bummed out because volleyball is canceled and all these things that she was really looking forward to even during this time, and even as they're kind of wrestling through their own fears and their own concerns, here's what I know deep down inside as an earthly father. I know that as much as I want to be there for them, I can't always be there for them. As much as I want to go deep down inside and help those places of loneliness and encourage their hearts and take away some of that pain, I can't go there. Only Jesus can. My number one job as a father is to point my kids to Jesus. That's it, that's my number one job. That's my number one role because he can. He can be there for them when I can't be there for them. He can minister to them, encourage them in ways I never could. He can love them perfectly. And trust me, I cannot love them perfectly. And so I wanna encourage you. Here's our homework assignment this week. As we face this next week together, here's our homework assignment. The first thing is this, when we wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing I want you to do before you slide out of bed, I want you to breathe this prayer. I want you to simply breathe this. I want you to say, I can't, but he can through me. I can't, but he can through me. Say that with me. I can't, but he can through me. And then as you go through your day, celebrate the ways that God is showing up and bringing harmony and bringing encouragement and helping you be content. Be aware of his presence throughout the entire day. And then at night, before you go to bed, here's what I want you to pray. Just before you go to sleep, just before you go to sleep, as you're laying there in bed, I want you to breathe this prayer. I want you to breathe this. Teach me the mystery of Christ in me. I know that some of you are like, that's weird. That's just kind of weird. I don't, I don't understand that. I dare you to do it. I dare you to whisper this in your heart. Holy Spirit, teach me the mystery, the secret of Christ in me. Because here's what you have to understand. There is no way for me to teach you about contentment. There is no way for me to, through stories to inspire contentment into your heart. Contentment is learned. Contentment is experienced in a day-to-day, moment-by-moment relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't give you this, but you can discover this in your relationship with Jesus. And so, around the homes, around the world. And uh, if you just bow your heads to me right now, and again, if you're, if you're listening and you're driving, please don't bow your head. Just stay focused on the road, but your heart, pay attention in your heart. I want you to think about this for a moment. I wanna give you an opportunity to connect with Jesus. Maybe for some of you, for the first time in your life, we're finding so many people right now are coming and, see and seeking who is Jesus and how can he impact my life. I wanna give you an opportunity to invite Jesus, his presence into your life, to make a commitment to him today, maybe for the first time. For others, maybe you're watching, it's been a while since you've been to church, it's been a while since you've, you've opened your Bible, but you've been coming back and looking for hope and looking for truth in, in the Bible, looking for truth around, around other Christ followers. So maybe for you, more, it's more of a rededication today. So if you're in that moment right now, 
and you're ready to make this decision, you say, you know what, I need Jesus. I need his contentment today for the first time. Or maybe today you need to rededicate your life to him. I wanna give you that opportunity right now. Um, there's many different, on all of our different platforms, we have ways of doing this. There's, for some of you, there's an icon of a hand that's just come up. You can click that right now. For others of you, it says today, I put my trust in Christ. Just click that right now. If you don't see anything on your screen, we'll explain that after the service is over today. But would you just bow your heads with me right now if you're able to, and would you pray this in your heart? Say this, Lord Jesus, right now in this moment, I wanna commit my life to you. I wanna trust you with my life right now, with everything, with this whole waiting season when I don't know what to do next, I trust you with my life. Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your hope, with your joy, with your peace, with your love with your contentment, fill me with your presence. Teach me, teach me, teach me deep in my heart the mystery of your presence dwelling inside of me. And this is important to say this, Jesus, you also know my sin. You know all of it. You know all of it. I know it all too well and I know that you know it and you still love me enough to lay down your life for me. I ask for your forgiveness today. I ask for your forgiveness and I thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Can we just, as we would do if we were gathered here in the auditorium, give God a huge hand today for all of those who are making decisions for Christ today. Family, I love you so much. I can't wait till we can gather again. But until then, I am loving the impact that we're having around the country and around the world. So we're gonna go back into worship now. So I don't know what you're doing. If you wanna stand at your house or whatever, let's just go back into worship together and let's celebrate the contentment of Christ, the promise of the hope of Jesus moving and dwelling into our lives that we can't, but he can through me. Let's worship together. Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizons With mercy for today Faithful you have been Faithful you will be You pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips.
ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven. So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus
Yes, God, what a powerful, amazing, incredible name that you have. God, we give you glory this morning, this evening, this afternoon, whatever time that you're in, what you're watching this. God, we're so grateful that you have been with us. You will continue to be with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For our next steps, let's turn it over to Pastor Matt. We are so glad you spent your time with us today on our online church family. If you accepted Christ today, we are so excited for you. So visit pureheart.org slash we can connect if you accepted Christ or if you're looking for any of the links that we mentioned during the service. If you're joining us for the first time, you need prayer, or you wanna help with our COVID-19 response teams, you'll find all of those ways to get connected at that link, pureheart.org slash we can connect. Remember family, you are loved and you're not alone. And if you don't live in the Phoenix metro area, please, please make sure you connect with your local churches, food banks, and nonprofits that are standing in the gap during this time of crisis. So have an amazing week, Pure Heart family, as we continue to love like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways.